I'm Malcolm. And the first thing I can remember is looking over a fence in Newport where we lived at the early part of the war and seeing all this dairy land, which is now all completely built out, and these magpies hovering around my head. My mother saw this and thought that the magpies were going to attack and came rushing out and shoot all the magpies away. I had a push bike and I decided that I was going to make a jet engine which I could fit to the push bike and take me up hills and, and save me pedalling. So I, I was interested in motorbikes too, you see, and so I got this muffler from an old uh, Norton. It was just the right shape to cut and, and weld and, and generally change the thing into a jet engine or a pulse jet. It was the same sort of principles as the V1 rockets in the, in the Second World War. Much of the engine glowed orange hot and this was mounted underneath the uh, crossbar. Uh, if I'd got burnt, it would have burnt me in a very serious place. In the same year, we got some new neighbours and he had two daughters and he would have loved to have had a son, so I was his, his surrogate son. He bought a, a lathe, really, for me to use and I didn't have access to a lathe otherwise. And I used that lathe to make what I still think is the first scuba gear in, in Australia. So I used to go skin diving with this. Down in the front of the house was an ideal area to go skin diving. And there was a little pool, which we called the Fraz. And I would uh, jump into the Fraz with this scuba gear, just testing it out. And my father looked out the window to see me dive in and not come to the surface again. So he rushed down to the Fraz. And I remember while I was hanging onto a rock so I could stay submerged, uh, there was this splash above me and I was dragged out of the water by my hair with, by my father, thinking that I had drowned. But I was all right and, and I was really just testing my gear. And I, that was Mark I. I made three in the end. The Mark I didn't work very well. But by the time Mark III came, it was like a conventional scuba apparatus today. All the same principles. Yes, that was a bit of fun. A friend in from work introduced me to some friends of his living in Vaucluse. Captain Piper's Road it was. And there were three girls living there. And uh, Helen was one of them. And so I started courting her. And uh, we, we fell in love straight away, really. And that was, that was, I think, February 1967. I met Malcolm for the first time. He was taking out a friend um, of one of the girls in the flat and she, she came for dinner and he came to pick her up and I didn't take much notice. And then I was going out with the friend that he flatted with or shared, who shared his house. And us girls were giving a party and I said to the fellow I was going out with, um, why don't you bring Malcolm Thompson to the party? So he did and nothing happened. And then we had another party a bit later on and another friend of mine said, I'll only come to your party if you ask Malcolm Thompson. So I asked Malcolm and he spent the whole evening following me around. And nine weeks later, we got engaged. Well, that was quite romantic too, I suppose. We were, we'd been to a picnic race meeting in Cootamundra and on the way home, we were coming back over the Blue Mountains and I stopped at, um, on the Bell's line of road and there's magnificent view over the, uh, over the valley there, Gross Valley, and uh, there Helen proposed to me. Well, that's my story. Oh yes, on the proposal day, there are rumours that I proposed, but of course that's quite untrue. We went to a lovely spot in the Blue Mountains and Malcolm proposed to me, and I sat there dumbfounded, and I thought to myself, I don't know this man, I'd only known him nine weeks, but he's right for me. So I said yes. The best part, of course, of my life is meeting Helen and having a family. It was just a marvellous experience. We shared the same age for a couple of months a year, but uh, anyway, we're both together. <laughs>